Warning, mature content ahead. You are now entering the Atomic Nerd Alert. Hello! Welcome back to a new episode of the Atomic Nerd Alert. I am your host, Jordan, and the ever-elusive Christina is out, so we have a guest speaker in today, my ever-weirdo, Holly. Oh, geez, nice. I'm a weirdo, even though I'm your sister. Come on. Oh, yes, you are very much (laughs) so the weirdo. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the awesomeness that is Deadpool. Oh, yes, yes. Now, this is just going to be the Deadpool movie, not the comics and the lore that goes with it. Although I do know about Mm -hmm. um, Thunderbolts and when Deadpool came to be, it was based off of the DC Slade Wilson, a.k.a. Deathstroke. And they were like, hey, I hate that you guys are always having these serious characters. Why are you having a serious Merc? This is going to be something awesome that we're going to be doing, and it is going to be Deadpool, Wade Wilson. So it's kind of a, a parody off of them, and he just took off running. Yes, not to mention how hilarious he is, even with the fandom. Yes. All the fandom that is out there, pictures that people drew up, you know, memes that they make, just how funny Deadpool actually is. Yeah, and he's he's one of the one characters that breaks that fourth wall so many times that he's just become a cult classic. And 20th Century Fox ended up making the Deadpool movie, and that is what we are going to be discussing. What were your takeaway thoughts about the Deadpool movie, Holly? First, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I was not expecting a lot of stuff that was within the movie, But at the same time, it's kind of expect the unexpected. It definitely is. I I mean, the people that they hired to play the characters, especially Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool, my God, he definitely redeemed himself from Green Lantern, even though I haven't seen it. Hmm. But I've heard the rumors. I've heard the rumors, and I've actually seen clips, not only on YouTube, but bits and pieces when it used to be on TV. Like... Uh, sci-fi play in superhero movies, Green Lantern, you know, stuff like that. See, I think that the Green Lantern movie could have been better if it was better written and and better directed. Ryan Reynolds definitely did redeem himself as Deadpool. Hell, he it's kind of mm. like Hugh Jackman there, where Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Yes. Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. I yes. mean, he... In real life, too, outside of acting, oh he, my gosh. he, he acts the same way. Yeah, You see him in like pictures with his wife, Blake Lively, and she, he's all like, I have my hand on her butt, and she's just laughing hysterically at him. And he's just like, uh-huh, this is my butt. I can touch this butt. Yes. So <laughs> that, it, it's very, very Deadpool-ish of him. And, and I think he really gave the character justice. I really do. I agree. I so totally agree. He pretty much brought Deadpool to life Mm -hmm. from the comics and everything. I just loved it. Now, it was 20th Century Fox that ended up doing this. They had the the movie rights to it, and there's rumors going around that Disney is discontinuing with the Marvel Universe, the Deadpool series, because Fox has all that content that they have the movie rights to it as punishment to try to bully their way into getting those movie rights. Do you think that Deadpool would be a little bit different if Disney had directed it? And do you think they did done a good job? You know, in all honesty, I think Disney would have pretty much made a mockery of it. As much as I love Disney, I mean, my favorite movie was Little Mermaid as a kid growing up and everything. But, you know, there are certain things that Disney should not touch and Deadpool is one of them. Yeah. I mean, granted, they now have other rights to Marvel and also the Star Wars franchise and everything. But as far as films go, I think it would be a bad choice if Disney actually made the movie. 
See, for me, Disney is that crazy uncle. I have a love-hate relationship with Disney. I hate Disney most of all. Yeah. We, but <laughs> we I grew up with Disney. And so, for me, Disney is that that creepy uncle that's an alcoholic that sits in the corner at the at holiday parties. Oh, and you're just like, oh, why do I have to take a picture creepy. with him? Why do I have to be nice with him? But you have to because he's family. And, and you still love him because he's family, even though he is nothing but that just constant yeah, creep that's that's, that's how i analogy. feel yeah that's how i feel about disney there i mean it's a, it's i'd work with them i would you know because i'm in the in the media field and everything i would mm-hmm. work with them but i really don't think that they would have done a good job with with deadpool yeah. at all i think that they would disnify it like yes. they did with marvel and the avengers and everything don't get me wrong avengers Age of Ultron, that was a really good movie. But at the same time, it was like, oh, let's slow-mo and CGI the fuck out of this shit. Yeah. And and that's something that I did not really enjoy. I mean, yes, they did a lot of CGI with 20th Century Fox, but it was more... Um, what's the term? It, it was more them actually doing their stunts and yeah, everything they, like how they would do with arrow and, and right the Flash it was more such. of their own stunts being done with the cgi added on to make it look like it was one fluid motion where you could hardly tell it was cgi but you still could tell it was cgi yeah that's that's the one thing that i really liked versus like say with marvel age of ultron all you see like the fighting scenes all it CGI is is CGI. Everything. It's like, hey, I'm going to super punch this guy. CGI the crap out of that. Oh, here's another. I'm going to throw this. Yep. CGI the crap out of that. That's that's the one thing that I think Disney tends to go overboard with because they have I agree. the a Pixar affiliate with them, too, that I, I really think that they would just CGI the crap out of it. A lot of the dialogue, because he says words, warning, fuck shit, titty, suck, Dick, midget, liquor, pussy, what, what have you? Yeah, pretty <laughs> he, much. He says all, any and everything of that, and and um, Disney wouldn't have any of that. They'd be like, no, no. we're a family friendly thing, and I think it would be like PG thirteen versus the R rating with that, which it really needed that R rating. It really needed yes, that strong it did. R rating. It really did, especially with the nudity that was within Deadpool. Oh yeah. I mean the spoilers for those who have not seen it yet, but the fight scene between Francis, Francis, and Francis. He got it from Ajax. So. <laughs> But the the fight scene between Wade and Francis in that underground study, Wade is full frontal. Now... Thank you, Blake Lively. (laughs) Yes, thank you, honey. But not just that. I mean, the sex scenes between Wade and Vanessa and everything it i mean from what i understood it was borderline nc-17 it was and they had to cut down so much of that nudity and violence to get that r rating yeah but do you think that nudity and violence was too much uh, adequate or just a little overboard you know, the, the violence it was the right amount of violence the nudity you know there's a lot of people going around saying oh you know, it's something that you could see every day anyway. But, I mean, as far as the violence goes, it was the right amount. The nudity, it was it was okay. I mean, it wasn't overboard. It wasn't like tits and dicks everywhere. Just Ryan Reynolds' dick oh, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it wasn't like every ten seconds you turn around, Oh, here's a dick. Oh, there's a pair of tits. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think it was like the happy medium with the two. Mm-hmm. before it got to that where it needed an NC-17 rating, but got the R rating. I'm just worried that, that Disney is going to try to bully their way to get that uh, movie right from Fox. Oh, I, I, I have the same feeling. Because of, of the overwhelming success. I mean, it was grossing billions of dollars. In, in three weeks, it was still getting, like, millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they're almost like a billion dollars. It's it's right behind Star Wars right now, which is huge. Yes. And I, I really think that Disney, because of, of that success, Fox is not going to give up the, the rights. I know there's Deadpool oh, no. 2 in the works right yes. now. But... 
Fox will not give up those rights, even though Disney is going to do whatever they can just to bully and push them. And they might even cut all the comics, which would suck. It really it, would it really suck, would. because then it would just be up to the fans of Deadpool coming out with their own comics and releasing it on, like, DeviantArt. Yeah. Which, I mean, that would be, like, no more Thunderbolts, no more Deadpool, exactly. no more... Exactly. You know, what, what was it? Spider-Man also has Deadpool in it, or mm-hmm. Avengers. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a lot of them have, have Deadpool in it, and he's everybody's favorite Merc, so I, I'm really apprehensive about that whole battle that's going to be going on between Disney and Fox just to get those movie rights on that. And uh, I hope there is going to be a couple more crossovers. I mean, it was kind of cool with love that. with uh, the X Men crossovers, but I'm thinking like something more Thunderbolts or something like that, or teaming up with Netflix in in um and doing like an original series, like how they did with uh, not necessarily. I'm I'm thinking more like having Deadpool Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool actually in the Daredevil show because i mean they're incorporating they're incorporating the punisher and the punisher is and and electra as well but the punisher and electra are two of the main focus people in the thunderbolts comics and when you add those in with with deadpool and deadpool is is one of the three of the dynamic trio i mean there's a couple more but those are like the dynamic trio right I would love to see that dynamic of them going at it and and adding Ryan Reynolds into into that because he is Deadpool no matter what he is Deadpool. Oh my gosh, yes. So that that's something that I was always thinking about. What do you what do you think about that? I I think it would be interesting to see that happen to actually see more Deadpool in other things like you said with um netflix series daredevil i could see deadpool making an appearance you know i mean like with x-men they had the x-men appearance only it was two characters but still they had the elements of x-men within the deadpool movie so why not just do more crossovers within that i think they might be exploring a little bit with that in the next one. I hope one. so, because that really would be do. awesome. I really hope that they would explore a little bit more with different characters and the different dynamics, because, I mean, Deadpool as a standalone character, he's badass. Oh my gosh. But add some of these other people in it, like throw in Nick Fury or, or throw in the Punisher, uh-huh. especially as two anti-heroes, the Punisher and Deadpool, and the side banter. by side, the banter between the, ban- the two, oh my or, God. or even um, get some Peter Parker in there because you know he's Deadpool. If you've if you've watched the uh, Marvel TV show with uh, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, Deadpool's in it a couple times, and he's like badass and and taking Peter on on different journeys and and trying to corrupt this little innocent child please into tell me something. lots of puns oh my god yeah oh, i love puns. so even if it's like spider-man have have like spider-man come in with the new one and but at the same time marvel has those rights still eh, which would true. make disney still have those rights so i i can see them playing around with with a lot of things but yeah. they would also have to have crossover rights kind of like how um NBC was it NBC or ABC for uh, Constantine. I don't know, but like I Constantine can't. had that crossover. Yeah. I think it was NBC with Constantine had that crossover with Arrow, right. and ABC is going to have that crossover with the Flash. So I can kind of see like the cross networking if Disney and um, if, and Fox can actually come to an understanding and I would some love to form see- of agreement. Yeah, I, I would love to see that and. Some of Deadpool can be in in the Disney, and then some of the Disney can be in in the um, 20th Century Fox. I yes. mean, people always confuse 20th Century Fox like Anastasia with. Oh my his gosh, that's Disney. the one thing that really bothers me. They go, yeah. Anastasia is a Disney princess. No, she's not, honey. Yeah. But but anyway, I loved this movie. It was. The right amount of satire. T.J. Miller oh, was oh, oh, hilarious in it. He's always hilarious in everything he does. 
But I, oh I think he gave that nice little back and forth with Ryan Reynolds yes. so much. They just played off of each other's banter. And I heard that some of their, their lines were actually not scripted. They that they were, were all... ad uh, Yeah, they were... Like, a lot of them were, were ad-libbed with T.J. Miller. Oh, my and, God. He's one of those where if he can't get the script or anything, it's just one of those... He'll just fly from the seat of his pants, and whatever sounds good to the directors and everybody, they'll keep it. Yeah, he's like your stoner best friend. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you see that paint on the wall? It looks like a chicken leg. Why does it look like a chicken leg? I'm going to eat that. Why am I eating paint chips now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he kind of has that sort of uh, comedy to him. and, and I so agree. And I, I really think that dynamic between the two was was just, it, it was perfect. Yes, it, it, it really was perfect. It gave that awesome element of the the comic, the comic relief. I mean, even as he was just known as the comic relief and, and some asshole Deadpool, you know, that Deadpool already himself is is a uh, comic figure. Yes. So adding that extra back and forth banter that, that just was just icing on the cake, I, I would say. And and uh, TJ Miller is, is definitely going places so far. I mean, he's been the comic relief in um, Transformers and, and he was in the comic relief in Deadpool. And Not to mention uh, he was also in How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, he was in How to Train Your Dragon. As one of the Dragon. twins. Yeah, so I really think that that dynamic might be fun to explore as well too in in the new one as well, seeing if uh, what was the his girl's name? Uh, what Wade's Vanessa? Or Vanessa. Yeah, was just Wade's girl. I, I want to see him as like uh, the best man if Vanessa and and Wade get married. That would be <laughs> hilarious. That, I mean, that's how he got his name of Deadpool because he was better against the Deadpool. And... Yes, it was a dead. Cool. Yeah. So I really think that that would be something that they could explore a little bit more with, and I hope that they do. But there is also one huge controversy about this whole Deadpool dynamic as well, with it being rated R. I know a lot of people are saying, oh my god, it's the first rated R comic book movie, blah, blah, blah. No, In it's all not. honesty, it's not. The first I mean, there was, was heavy metal and... And, um, as far as I know, the first one rated R went all the way back to 1976, I believe. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, these rated R movies are awesome, and I don't think that you could have done Deadpool any justice if he didn't have anything below an R rating. I no, I totally agree. And then because also, if it was rated PG thirteen, it wouldn't be as hilarious. There wouldn't be that you know all the awesomeness that Deadpool is and the slow mo guy spread all on the uh, yeah the, the sign and the highway. The violence would have had to have been cut way more even even than it before. I mean, yeah. it, and it would probably be like, oh, we're fighting some robots or some bullshit like that, like Disney yeah, likes to do. It, some kind of fucked up, twisted world. But my thing is, parents who are freaked out about the rated R, you know, the R rating, or they're they're taking little kids into yes, this movie that, when that, in the first freaking frames of, of everybody going through and and seeing the credits where it says some asshole and and all that, you have Deadpool. Giving a freaking tea bag to a dude while he has a, a, a gunshot, like a gun wound in his asshole, while another Holding dude has. Holding on to the underwear of one guy while decapitating up another, another one. guy with yeah. his katanas. I'm like, why would you bring a why, kid in exactly, there? Exactly, that is that is one thing that really bothers me is when you think that it is a good idea to take your child who is under seventeen. <laughs> to a rated R movie. Right? I, it's just something no, I don't understand. No, that is understand. a no-go. You do not do that. You get a babysitter. You go by yourself or you go with your friends that is around the same age as you. Or you wait till your child is 17 to watch the damn movie. Or you, you get it on demand when yes. the kid is, is asleep and such. You can watch it then if you can't go out and everything. But 
why the hell would anybody bring that? I mean, yeah, there's parents that show them Game of Thrones, and there's parents that show them... Um, that bothers me Yeah, a lot that bothers me as well, too. Game of too. Thrones, there's sex everywhere. There, yeah, it, it's, it's just a giant slasher slash porno. Well, but, they, they didn't call I mean, it, you know, medieval porn hub for nothing. <laughs> right? But why would you bring them into Deadpool if you know that the critics have been saying that it's more violent than than Game of Thrones or more violent than Walking Dead. Why would you bring your kid in there? Exactly. It, it's just mind-boggling. Because when, when we went, my, Holly and I went with the ever-elusive Chris, we witnessed this little kid being dragged in there and... and she, parents were, were yeah she was not too happy about it she had her baby doll with her apparently it was like and i don't know the situation and neither does jordan or chris but it kind of felt like one of those well mommy and daddy want to see this movie and you have no babysitter so bring your baby doll to keep you company and just we'll get you whatever you want from the concession stand that's what it felt like while watching her kind of stomp up the steps, get into her seat. Because, I mean, there was another kid movie that was going on. They could have let their kid be in that, watch that movie. I mean, yeah, I, I can understand I not wanting to be alone. to go down and watch the kid movie. Because I think it was like Kung Fu Panda 2 is also what was playing in the next theater. Over. Sorry, Kung Fu Panda 3. But why the hell would you bring your kid... To a freaking rated R movie. I, I mean, is it Deadpool, yes, you, you see all these, um, oh, what is it? The, the, the trailers, you see all these trailers of how awesome it is. But they can only show you so much because that is extensive and, and huge. I mean, there's like freaking strap-ons thrown around. There was Ryan Reynolds masturbating to a, a unicorn. I can never look at a unicorn the same <laughs> That's anymore. That's why we call it now Unicorn. Oh, God. <laughs> only use your horn only when you have to. Jesus, Jordan. <laughs> but oh, I'm I'm sorry. That just that's one thing that just keeps irking me. There is is neglectful parents. And not- it, I mean, this doesn't even imply to just Deadpool. This applies to all rated R movies. Do not, for the love of God, do not take your child that is under seventeen. To a rated R movie. They will have nightmares. I mean, it's your kid if you know their maturity level. Because the kids have different maturity levels. If you know their maturity level. If it's a specific rated R movie or something, okay. If if you can see it that way. But at least before you take your kid, pre-screen it as well. Be a little more responsible. Go have a, a friend take notes or something if they've seen it before you could. Just be... Just use your better judgment when you're taking your kid, your your underage kid, to a rated R movie, especially something as violent. I mean, it was heads lopping off, Ryan Reynolds dick. <laughs> Getting shot in the ass. I mean, he got shot through the arm, and then he kind of put his finger through the wound before it healed up. Sawing off his arm yeah, as well. Yeah, cutting off his arm just like in... The 128 day movie, I think. Yeah, 127 that was, hours. Or yeah. whatever it was based off of the true person. Oh, it's it's adequate violence for Deadpool, but way too much for, for a child an to adolescent. Go see. I mean, they, so. they specifically say with rated R, no child. That's also with NC 17, no child under 17. Yeah, that's what NC 17 means. Exactly, yeah. but with rated R, they even specifically say 17-year-olds and up can go see a movie. I remember my first movie, rated R movie in the theater when I was 17. Mm-hmm. It was Underworld Evolution. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Our dad took us. And our, our mom and Jordan saw a different movie. Yeah, we saw the Queen Latifah one. The Last Holiday. Yeah. But, I mean, back on to the not taking your kids to an R-rated movie. It's our personal opinion that we prefer not to have any children in an R-rated movie theater or an auditorium that is playing an R-rated movie. But in all honesty, it's your child. You raise your child how you want. As I tend to say, not our child, not our problem. Just use your better judgment on that. Yes, please. Use your better judgment. 
Speaking of better judgment, what did you think about Deadpool being released on Valentine's Day? Oh, I loved... Oh, Valentine's Day weekend. I loved that idea. I thought it was a good idea because it would bring all the nerdy couples out of their hidey holes. Yeah. And they would have some awesome date nights by watching one of their favorite people within the movie and just... It was awesome. I thought it was a really good idea. Mm. I enjoyed the concept of taking it, like releasing it on Valentine's Day, because there's a lot of these nerdy type people like us. Oh my gosh, yes. Us atomic nerds. <laughs> we are the Dorcasaur army that likes to go out and have fun, and there hasn't been that many movies catered towards our love and our love of the theater of the comic book comic turned books to theater or, or you know video games turned to movies which i would love to see not only a deadpool video game there is a deadpool video game it came and i out. just now <laughs> found out about this that just tells you how much yeah, it's, I'm it's in correlation things. with the movie. I haven't played it. It came out, I think, um, a couple weeks, if not a month, before the Deadpool movie was released. That's awesome. And it's it's pretty much like um, paratext to the movie. So it's parallel with what's going on in the movie versus that's, that's that. awesome, it's like though. other, other um, ways of hunting down Ajax and... All that sort of stuff. Some, soap. Yeah, we gotta get some <laughs> soap on a rope. Oh, but God, no. I, I do like that uh, they release it on Valentine's Day as mm, well. Because, yes. I mean, some people aren't really nerds. And they're like, ooh, Ryan Reynolds. That's a, that's a selling yeah, point. That's For us so- nerds that, that have the unnerdy girl or, or guy, in Holly's case, that absolutely hates all nerd stuff and all superheroes because they're this is a superhero movie you're you're not a Deadpool's not a freaking superhero he's an anti-hero yes he 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 is a mercenary but he will do anything if the pay is right it's a good selling point especially for those ladies that are like ooh I like Ryan Reynolds he's a hot guy okay we'll go see this movie or even the actor who played Francis Ajax yeah you he was actually pretty cute. <laughs> I wouldn't know. No, uh, you wouldn't Vanessa. know. You were, you were more into Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. And you were hoping you would see Vanessa tits. <laughs> no, I'd respect her a lot more. I would have rather seen Vanessa be much more of a badass than... than she, she wasn't given enough credit. She no, was just she like, wasn't. But oh, here's the damsel in distress. Oh, I'm going to help save you. But Well... She was, and she wasn't the damsel in distress. Yeah, I mean, I just, wa- I just wanted was, to see her. I did kick notice ass. one continuity error, mm-hmm. though. The scene where she's in that tube, where they deplete the oxygen, mm-hmm. and Wade throws one of his katanas up there to break the glass and kind of let oxygen in. She's trying to pull the sword out, yeah. and she cuts her hands. Well, when I have no idea what Iron Dude from X-Men, what his actual name is. When he lifted that concrete on top of it, you look at her hands, there's no marks. But was she actually cutting that or was she cutting the ropes that was behind? She used it to cut the ropes first and then she pulled the sword and cut her hands. Uh. Because at a certain point her hands were pressed against the glass and you could see the cuts. Yeah. And as soon as she got out of it... When the two from X Men helped, you, there were no cuts on her hands. So that was one continuity error that Unless, I noticed. Unless, because of how much she was um, exposed to it, I know she didn't have that mutagen involved with her, but maybe she had that already in her blood. And that so might you're have... thinking that she might be a mutant and not know it? Yeah, she might be a mutant and not know it. And that oxygen thing, it didn't like do what it did to to Deadpool. It didn't do what it did to Wade, to her. And that way, it, it, that could be easily explained if that's what happened. That she I can, actually... I mean, I can see that point, ...heals up really fast but, as a super soldier. I mean, Ajax didn't inject her with the Unless stuff. she already had that, that dormant gene. 
already in there. True. I mean, I I do see what you're saying, Mm -hmm. but as far as, like, the filmmaker's side, that's just one continuity error. Yeah, I definitely know that. I try not to look at all that. Yeah, I (laughs) know. This time around, I tried not to look at it as a... But it's hard for you As a film major. sometimes you're all like, okay, I just want to enjoy the film, but... But I can't. Shit, I can't. (laughs) But this one, I actually was able to sit back and and relax and and look at the the shots and and look at... Because it wasn't, like, distracting, like, how, how... Disney would have done it where it was distracting, like, oh, look at this CGI, this is CGI, this is continuity error, this is continuity error. Or we're gonna act like our weapons are all bloody when they're not, you Yeah. Know? Or, oh, I'm gonna pretend that I'm fighting a bunch of robots when I'm really not. That's sort right. Of, it's just... I, yeah. I really enjoyed this. I, I really recommend this. I really do. I I definitely recommend it too. All right, guys. So tell us what you think about the Deadpool movie. If oh, you yes. want to see more Deadpool in different movies, if you want to see a crossover with the Disney and the Fox, maybe try to make peace or something. I would love for that to happen. Also, give us your thoughts of, about the Vanessa thing. Is she a mutant or is she just a continuity error? But anyway, if you like our graphic. It was made by the ever awesome Charizard, also known as Charlie of Chuck Pros. He's my boy, so make sure you give my boy some love. Go to Twitter, look up Chuck Pros, like his stuff, share it. He is also on the Facebooks, which it is under Chuck Productions. Make sure you give him a good like if you want to contact him to make some graphics for you. Go for it. He'd much obliged to that. He loves doing this stuff. So give our boy Charlie some love. Let us know what you guys think. And we shall see you next time. Hail Cthulhu. In honor of Chris, hail Satan. And bye.